Good evening and welcome to Sales Academy Showcase with your host, Adam Brooks. So Sales Academy Showcase is a show where we interview leaders in business to, to get underneath and to go a little bit deeper. So to learn a bit more about the people behind the brands and the businesses that they've built. So before I go on, what I will say is podcast safely. Listening to engaging content can distract you from your daily life. But no animals or business leaders were harmed in the making of these shows yet. So today we had the pleasure of a conversation with Katie Mitchell of Moments by Katie Mitchell Photography. Uh, and Katie's an individual who I believe has an awesome business, an inspiring kind of inquisitive mind. She's lived a life already. She's got a lot of experience to bring to the table and she's what I consider to be somebody I like to hang out with. So I'll let Katie introduce her business a bit more in detail in terms of the conversation as we go through. But uh, Katie, can we just start with, can you remember, how did we first meet? Um, I first encountered you at a networking meeting. Um, I'm not sure we actually spoke, um, but yeah, I got to know what you've been doing in terms of Sales Academy and the free workshops that you were doing. And I, I'd kind of found out about it too late. You were coming to the end of them by that point. Um, but yeah, that's how we first met. Quality. Encountered. Now there's an interesting description. <laughs> well, I don't know. It took maybe a wide berth. <laughs> but to be fair, it's, it's yeah, it's the same thing to do. Is in, in a room, to give me a wide berth. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a networking meeting we were in Gloucester, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So the events we were running for Scooby Doo last year. So, um, oh, it, it was cool because you did a presentation that night, if I remember, and you you brought your iPad with you and you were demonstrating. You were literally flicking through your screen and demonstrating what you do and showcasing what you do. And I remember just how smooth you did it in terms of, and I don't mean smooth like silky kind of cheesy. You were just very, very present and very smoothly just explaining what was coming up. So you knew your slide deck, you were very confident doing it. And I was, I was impressed. I think so many photographers come along and tell people what they do. I was like, well, I can just show you. So yeah, <laughs> just have yeah. the photographs in front of me while I tell you a bit about me and why I do what I do. So <clears throat> it just cool. makes sense. Well, it stood out and it stood out for the right reasons to be fair. So Good for, you, good for you. So on that subject, then you just said, um, you know, find out a little bit about you. So, so tell us, because uh, I want to go back a little bit further in terms of, you know, um, what were you doing before you were doing this? So give our listeners and our YouTube viewers a, a bit of a background, Katie. So tell us about you, please. Okay, so um, the main part of my life predominantly was um, I was a soldier in the British Army until very recently, really. I've been out nearly a year now, um, which has flown by. Um, so I did 17 years in the British Army. Um, uh, in that, I mean, I literally joined at 16. So it's the first thing I'd ever known, but the only job I'd ever had. Um, it, it's, it's definitely made me who I am. Um, I loved it. It was amazing. It gave me so many opportunities. Equally, it was horrendous at times as well, but then I think any job is like that. It was massive ups, massive downs. Um, and in the end, I left because I had a little boy a few years ago. He's now three, um, and I just couldn't bear the thought of going away and deploying and leaving him for seven months at a time. And even the idea of just going away on an exercise for like two or three weeks and leaving him just felt suddenly, I don't want to do that. It's, I don't want to go play soldiers and leave him behind. It's so it, the my, right? yeah, my, my decision was made pretty quickly into maternity leave I just had this epiphany that I can't I don't want to do this anymore yeah so what were you doing in the military then if you don't want me asking just so I work in in the Royal Signals in IT communications um I was always quite good at, at like I went through training I was always quite good at the, the things that I put my mind to a bit of a swap when it comes to academic and that kind of stuff so I always did quite well on my driven? courses would you would you say driven <laughs> uh yes definitely yeah. competitive yes <laughs> yes absolutely um the military has definitely made me as a person it was never like a lifelong ambition um <laughs> probably major part of my story is that when I was a child I was always told 16 and you're out the door so there was always a bit of a panic a countdown there as to what the hell am I going to do yeah, um, and it all came about because I went to an air show back in the day when we could afford such extravagances and um, it went to Aria Valley air show and I was like oh my gosh I want to be a fighter pilot <laughs> that's going to be amazing so yeah I went home this is what I'm gonna do and then my mum said well you've got low blood pressure do you think that you'd really be able to fly at however many g-forces that, that would entail I was like oh yeah probably not 
I'll join the army instead. That is the exact thought process. Within like nine months, I was in. <laughs> Honestly, it's incredible. The amount of military and ex-military I've spoken to and their, their journeys are very, very similar. And there's, yeah. there's almost like a, there's a chunk that follow, that it seems to be like a percentage that follow in their father's or their mother's footsteps. Yeah. There's a chunk that uh, they kind of grow up just, that's what they want to do, but that's a small chunk. And then there's a lot of people that kind of fall into it for a various reasons. Some of them running away from their lives. Some of them kind of not really sure what to do. Not really don't want to go to college. Don't want to go to uni. Friends have got goals and plans. I don't really know what. There's a, that massive kind of pool of people that go, oh, I want to do this. Oh, but can you? No. Well, I'll do that instead then. My brother wanted to be a fighter pilot, ended up a firefighter because he, can, he couldn't do fractions. <laughs> I thought surely with air, air breathing tanks and stuff, you've got no fractions, right? How much of your tanks left? Quarter. What? <laughs> I'm going to die on a fire with my brother. It's not a good thing. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I could have joined the RAF still. There's lots of jobs that don't involve fighter jet pilots. But yeah, yeah. the Army was my decision and that's what I went with. So, Brilliant. So what was your, give us your biggest hi highlight then of your time in the Army. What would you Gosh. say there? Um, I think everyone joins the Army because they want to go on tour and do their job. Um, and I had the first, I mean, I went to Bosnia when I was... Mm, maybe like 19 years old and I really enjoyed that it was my first time away but it wasn't a proper operational tour so probably my first trip to Afghanistan was amazing I had a really important job lots of good stuff happened because of me and it was just a really good feeling to do my job and have actionable direct consequences that that were really good for the operations you made, you made an impact right yeah I like that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, uh, Af I've never been to Afghan, but I've been told it's a beautiful, beautiful country, apart from the unrest and all that sort of stuff. It is a stunning country. Yeah, I can't, I can't pretend to have seen a lot of it. I saw the inside of a few camps, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's nice and warm. <laughs> yeah, 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 I bet, I bet. <laughs> Quality. So, um, so jumping from the military then, it seems a bit of a leap to, to, to do what you're doing now. So, you know, what inspired you to get into this? Um, so photography has always been a hobby. I was probably ever since I was, was a child, had a camera in my hands. Um, my husband got me a gift, a proper camera, big camera as people call it. Um, I think it was like the year after we got married. Um, and like many people, I used it on auto for a very long time. <laughs> um, but I just love the hobby and when I finally, I think it was after my trip to Afghanistan actually, that I was like, right, I want to take this seriously and I want to learn how to use this because I can see how I could have come away from that with so much better photos if I'd have really known what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it was all a hobby. Um, practiced every genre going. I was living down in Pembrokeshire, so I was photographing a lot of sheep and landscapes and stuff. And, um, and then when I moved to Gloucestershire, I started taking photographs of the people because that was something I really wanted to get into. Um, and I started to get quite good at it. Um, but I mean, it was, it was just literally a hobby. I never ever imagined that I would do photography. And I'd always actually had in the back of my mind that I wouldn't do it as a business because I didn't want to ruin my hobby. Yeah. Um, but I had my little one, as I mentioned before, Oliver, and he, I just I had the epiphany that I didn't want to go back to work and I just couldn't bear the thought of leaving him. At, but it meant that um, I just, I, it just all clicked, like all, all in the same moment, it clicked that, hang on a minute, I've had this, I'm, I'm quite good at this, I'm quite good at this, I don't want to do this. But it was all meshed in with the fact that from the second I had Oliver, um, even when I was pregnant, I just felt this amazing um, rush of passion for family. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't, I don't want to pretend I had a difficult upbringing. I, that's a strong word. It was, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it just wasn't something that I look back on fondly. Um, I don't have amazing memories. I'm like, wow, I love my time as a child and that kind of thing. So yeah. family for me was never just, it was just a thing. Yeah. Um, I love my family, but it just didn't excite me. Yeah. It all kind of fit into place when I had Oliver. I'm like, oh my God, you this is amazing. This is, this is my family. And suddenly I just had this huge fire inside me for wanting to just make the most of it, to, to just savor every second. Yeah. Um, and capturing and those moments when they're young, they, they change so much, don't they? And even in the first 
few days, right? So much. In, it's so insane. So all of this kind of all happened at the same time. And it suddenly clicked that, hang on, I'm quite good at this. I've always kind of fancied newborn photography in the back of my mind, um, but I never imagined I'd do it. And then I'm like, I want to take photos of my own baby and I'm not very good at that bit. So I need to train in that. Right. This is what I'm doing. Done. <laughs> I knew I had to go back to work, so I did have to go back to work for financial reasons, and it was probably the worst year of my life, <laughs> being a bit extreme, but I did worst year of my career potentially, yeah. um, because it was just really, it was just really difficult. I didn't want to be there anymore, but you have to give a year's notice, so it was a long time um, where I was waiting to leave, and I was I went back to working full time, and I just hated the fact that I was away from Oliver constantly. Yeah. Um, that must so, be a bit of a conflict because you loved what you were doing, right? And then, then suddenly to have that almost like, I don't know, it's, it, it kind of tears at your soul a little bit because you've got a, a career that you loved and then you've got a little, uh, your, your boy that you love and it's like, right, what? Oh, yeah. I don't want to get into the resentment stage, but I don't want to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I think um, very much with the army, it's, you have massive highs and massive lows and it was definitely tapering off towards the end anyway. Um, my, I wasn't particularly in love with the specific role that I was doing. Um, and I knew that if I moved, if, if I had stayed there any longer, if I hadn't have given my notice in when I did, then they would have given me notice to move somewhere where I would have ended up employing. So it was all a case of, right, I need to do this at this time. Um, so yeah, it was moving from something that has always been very secure, <laughs> as, as is uh, very different now, uh, a very secure career, good wage into the unknown of, right, I'm a mum now and, I'm not, quite, not in, it's a very, very different life to what I had a year ago. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you're, basically, you're basically describing a couple of chapters of The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, where they, we have that kind of, oh, I've got to do this. I'm going to do this. And it's all exciting. And then the reality kicks in and you're like, shit, I'm doing this. I'm actually doing this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a brilliant thing. Um, so t practically then, how did you get, how did you kind of take the leap into it? So. I understand a little bit about you, the passion and you, and, and I, I know a bit about you now, Katie, I haven't worked with you for a while. So I, I see that in everything you do, right? It's not just a, and I'm not blowing smoke at your backside, whatever you take on, you're, even if you're not enjoying it, you'll give it your hundred percent. And I've always, I've always seen that and I respect that. What do you see as the kind of the practical steps that go right now, I'm going to start the business. What do you actually do to start it? So I started, first thing I, what I did was get training because I knew I wanted to do that newborn side of things. And you cannot, you cannot be a newborn photographer without training because it's, if you do the pose styling that I wanted to do, because it's just dangerous, you could, you could hurt a baby. <laughs> so it was very important to me that I was trained in that and could do it well. I, I always want to do everything well. I'm actually a self-taught photographer. So I taught everything how to do the photography by myself, but I knew that this was something that I needed help with. So I started off getting technique? training. What is the technique, if you don't mind me asking? Of, of newborn photography. Yes, yeah. Um, so there's just a lot of it in terms of safety, how you pose them, how you get them to be comfortable in those poses. Um, there's but a lot of little shots things. Shots we see with them all kind of wrapped up. Yeah, yeah, wrapping them like. safely and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Okay. So okay. yeah, there's, there's quite a few bits to it. Um, it's not an easy job, but I like a challenge. And <laughs> it's very rewarding. Or not? <laughs> they, they stay awake sometimes. <laughs> So what's a, a slight tangent? What's easier when they are sleeping or when they're actually awake? Oh, when they're uh, sleeping for sure. Because <laughs> when they're in a nice deep sleep, they're quite easy to just move from position to position. Position. They're entirely happy, and I can just right. I'll just change them a little bit, take a photo, change them into a completely new pose, even change their outfits, and they're still fast asleep. That's yeah. <laughs> that's the ideal. <laughs> yeah, I was that kind of baby apparently. Sleep <laughs> Cool. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so there's quite a lot of training involved to to get started and to make sure that you're doing it correctly because it's our precious little babies when they're literally days old right so yeah, absolutely understand that. Okay. parents most prized possession you don't want to end yeah. up hurting them and you want to be able to give obviously the parents confidence that you know what you're doing so it's very important to me that i got training in that uh, so that was probably the first thing i did and then it, i set about building up my portfolio doing stuff for free doing stuff um doing stuff at a very low cost in order to get ex um, babies in exchange for <laughs> photographs, that kind of thing. That's so it started yeah. off slowly, but yeah, we got there in the end. <clears throat> okay. 
So, and you've, you've branched out because you don't just do baby photography and newborn now. You do a quite, so what's the range of photography that you do? So mind. there's two sides to my business. One is the family photography side and one is the branding. Within the family side, um, I did the newborn, but I've, I've, and I absolutely love the newborn side of it, but I've actually grown really quite fond of the bit before that, which is the maternity photography. So okay. for me, that is just the best because it makes a mum just feel incredible at a time when often when you're pregnant you don't actually feel that good um yeah it's nerve-wracking it's anxiety ridden you get yeah. puffy and frumpy and you just don't feel like whoever gets the pregnancy glow is very lucky but i'm there to help you find that glow <laughs> so when when women actually take the step of having those photographs they love it but i meet so many women who say oh, I don't have any photos when I was pregnant. I couldn't bear the idea of photos. <laughs> and I'm just like, you can't get that time back. So yeah. for me, I love that side of things. And with the business, I've got maternity and newborn and I kind of follow the family through the journey with all their important milestones. So when your baby can sit up and smiling and not yet on the move, so they're nice and easy to photograph. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then when they get their first birthday, some people love to do cake smashes. It's a really modern way of celebrating their birthday, just giving a baby a cake and just see what they do <laughs> it's yeah, quite yeah, funny yeah. um become a then, friend of the family effectively and grow with them yeah absolutely cool. what a absolutely. lovely what a lovely way to approach it yeah and then the family photographs and hopefully get all the grandparents involved uh, as much as possible as well it's just been difficult this year with covid and everything just trying to get everyone together yeah um it's, it's, it's funny i met a i met a wedding photographer um who really stood out to me last about two years ago and he said one of the things he does is he, he, he finds out about the older members of the family. He said, because at my wedding, he was talking about himself, he said, there was an auntie that was at my wedding that we didn't even know if she was going to make it to the wedding. Yeah. He said, so I asked, he said, we always do the groom shots, bride shots, and loads of sessions. He said, but I always ask them, like, who are the older relatives that you'd really want to capture some memories with? He said, and I make sure that I, I'd make an investment into them as well at that, because it may be the last really good photos they ever have of those people and i was like wow yeah and it's, it's that kind of important job you dismiss it but it's a really important job yeah it's that kind of consideration that you guys bring to the table that it's not just taking bloody photos yeah and mm -hmm. that's what so you said a, a few times sorry i interrupted you, you said how much you love it and stuff so why do you believe in it so much katie why is it so important to you that you dedicate your kind of energy your passion into it some of the feedback I've had over the last few days or then weeks is just, uh, it's, oh my gosh, it's amazing. So for example, there's a lady I did a mummy and me session for um, recently. And um, I've just started incorporating breastfeeding photographs into that because yeah. it's an important part of a journey for some mums, not all mums. I think there's often an element of either you want to do it and you get to do it, great. You want to do it and you can't do it. And often mums beat themselves up because they can't do it and some mums choose not to but that part that bonding for a lot of women is very important yeah so i thought it'd be great to incorporate that so she came along for a photo shoot uh, a mummy and me as part of and it, with the um, incorporation of some breastfeeding photographs as well and i posted her sneak peek online like i do on facebook uh, after their shoots if they let me and she sent me a message afterwards saying how amazing it was because she had two IVF babies um, both were very difficult pregnancies and really scary for her and she was she genuinely never thought she would get to a point where she could have children let alone two beautiful children um, she didn't get to breastfeed as much as she wanted to with her first child so when she was able to do it with her second and for me to capture that she literally said it brought her to tears happy ones she added at the end and it just it melted my heart yeah. so i am i'm just i just love the feedback like that of how important some of these moments are for for parents and it just fills my heart with joy yeah because that's there every time they see that she'll have that memory she'll have that emotion that that hook into that feeling that she had the first time she saw that that realization that she's a mum yeah she she said um the the right. image of strength and motherhood was just so emotional so that's yeah, as feedback like goes that. that's pretty spot on right yeah that's pretty <laughs> <good. tears laughs> <my eyes> now. <laughs> but i can hear the emotion in your voice because that's what i mean you, you can hear it when you talk about what you do 
there's yeah. such passion there's such energy for for capturing those moments and the importance of how quickly they go by and stuff so i love that about you um you said there were two parts so the family side of it yeah so i started doing the family photography and obviously i've met a lot of women primarily i meet lots of men as well but i, I do speak to a lot more women yeah. and a lot of them are running their own businesses as well like through networking as well i've met so many amazing businesses and that it just became clear that there's a need and there's a bit of a niche actually in terms of the type of photography that i do because i'm not that passionate about headshots because i don't think they really do much for a person they don't really tell you anything about them it's just a head <laughs> that looks a bit smarter than a selfie um so what i provide is personal brand photography and those photographs help you to tell more of a story and to put yourself at the front and center of your brand I think more and more people are realizing that that's what makes you unique in your business. It, it's you because there's a million, no matter what business you've got these days, someone else is doing it too. You might think you're unique, but someone else is doing it. So how do people choose? And I think that it's important that you bring your own personality out there. And I know a lot of people are worried about that kind of thing. Well, I might repel people what if they don't like me well i think well great because you don't want to work with them either if they're not going to like you so it's a great way of attracting the people who you will get on with and repelling the people that you don't 100 <laughs> percent, 100 percent, totally agree so yeah the the branding side of things is getting quite popular um i'm really enjoying that side of things just as a as a just a contrast it, it's two completely different things but all kind of linked in together because a lot of these people do have their own families and they have the same yeah. values and they're trying to build a business which they can support their family on like me so it really so helps with, you do, so with your photos and both the family and the, the the kind of brand stuff is it is it studio led is it location led a combination of both what's combination of both so the branding is all about you as a person so generally i'll come to where you are and capture you in your environment mm -hmm. i primarily a studio photographer but i do i do do outdoor stuff as well mm. so okay. it's a bit of a combination fab so is there product stuff product photography things yeah like there's an element of that i tend to offer the product photography to people who are branding clients as well as a bit of a top up um but i i've kind of recently yeah. over lockdown actually um developed that a little bit more because because lockdown just completely stopped photography for a good few months in terms of interacting with people and that kind of thing but for those running their own businesses i was able to actually support a local business by helping her with her product photography because she had to have a massive pivot because of lockdown as well so yeah i've certainly incorporated a bit more product photography into my yeah. lineup as well but there was like a there was like an extended holiday for a period of time we we're all going this is quite cool and then suddenly everyone got shit we got to get busy we, yeah really and um, the weeks were amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were they were brilliant and the sun was amazing right we haven't had sun like that for a long time no it was in the year. but i think because so many people have had to go online how they productize their product and their service and package it up and present it too many p's in that sentence but I think that's where the, the personal photography, the brand photography and the product photography all combining in together is a, it's got to be a massive growth market for you. And anyone in business should be talking to you. I, I, it's a bugbear of mine when I see companies using stock photography and there's, there's an element where you kind of have to, but God, the sooner, the sooner you can own your own photos, mm -hmm. your own videos, your own content, I think the better. So massive advocate. Yeah. It is. Um, it's something that I tell people that you don't have to wait for. A lot of people think they, they'll wait until they're successful to, to invest in something like that. It's a big investment. We can't afford it at this stage, but wouldn't it be a great way to give you the, um, the head start? If you, if you can look professional from the offset and you look at two businesses, one that's got professional photography, one that's full of stock photography that you can recognize a mile off, which one are you more likely to choose as the consumer, the one who looks more professional, more established? So for yeah, me, it makes sense to just prioritize that and yeah, fake and it till you make it, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, as well as it being professional, I think it's also more personable. Mm, absolutely. So, like going back to what you said a minute ago, it's your personality coming through the brand. Yeah. So yeah. if they're your photos and you've done them and they're, they're shoot, you're, you're in your shoots and different things, you're in your premises or location, your kind of brands, in the background is quite subtle oh it's beautiful and that's it starts to tell that story and build that relationship when you're seeing that stuff on facebook with a brand you're seeing that on their website on their it gives you that trust yeah. that you start to build up with them that they actually know what they're doing and they're taking it seriously i think credibility yeah yeah massive credibility thing okay so 
we're touching on the space here then that straight question why would somebody need or want your services in their lives um two different reasons depending on what what side of things we're talking about yeah Let's stick with the branding because we're on it i think it's important that you are professional and credible but also have that differentiator people again consider it to be a big outlay which for small business it absolutely can be yeah. But what you're getting in, in return are assets for your business. So it's not just a case of you pay for something and then it's over. You don't get to use it again. You can use those photographs again and again and again. And the more you use them, the more you, you're kind of recognized for them as well. But there's the element of being able to keep refreshing and, and staying professional. And also, it's really important these days to be on top of your social media. So if you don't have visual content on your social media, you aren't going to get seen. And there's only so far memes and, and silly pictures, stock pictures are going to go. You need scroll stopping imagery to, to get noticed. Exactly. Man. And you're, you're involved in that yourself, aren't you? You've teamed up with a few people and you've got, yeah. you're building an offering. You've got some groups that set up and stuff and you've got this well, a group of people that are basically helping people brand, build their social media, the whole piece. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we have teamed up with a local lady called Karina who runs Magic Bean Media. And she, we are between us, we offer a package where she, she, she does the social media management and I provide enough imagery for her to use throughout the time um, of three months, for example a whole quarter where she's got enough visual content to schedule out all of your all of your social media posts um there's the element of it that i, I think it's important to note that I, i'm very much about keeping things personal to you and yeah. the idea of handing that over to someone else potentially doesn't feel that personal but it's being able to we work together to work out the story so we'll have a consultation where we all get involved and i understand your stories fully so that i can take the photographs that you're taking at the same time you're thinking well what stories am i telling which is writing your content for you yeah, <laughs> and yeah. what i love about those planning sessions is that you're thinking about the different ways you can explore that story and it just prods the prompt content in your mind and then karina can put it out for you but there's lots of different options depending on what your budgets are and all that kind of thing so yeah. it works really nicely i think cool love it absolutely so let's talk about the industry myth then uh and i'm talking myths horror stories uh rumors about industry and photography like copyright who owns it the photographer or the person that buys it from you know what are some of the myths and the horror stories in your industry that you want to kind of bust some of those myths right now to anyone listening um it, i'm trying to think of branding ones i can't think of too many branding ones maybe, maybe that'll come to me but in terms of family photography um it's perhaps i don't know if it's a myth if it's true <laughs> but you do get a lot of photographers out there who who they just spring the prices on you when you've seen the photographs and it's just all very sly and I hate that. Like, but it's one of the first things I decided when I um, set up my business that I would never be like that. I have been stung myself where you win a free photo shoot, which is quite renowned uh, with some photographers and um, you win a free photo shoot and they go in and they show you your photographs, which you either love or you kind of like, and then, they spring you with the prices and then there's a pressure sell to get you to buy them and i know of so many friends who've been stung and spent like a thousand odd pounds that they couldn't afford on photographs well actually they didn't really love but they were kind of forced to do yeah. forced to buy and i hate that and so i've always been very upfront with my prices um I want you to know you can afford it before you come, but I also try and work around and keep things afford like affordable with payment plans and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to be upfront with people. Like yeah. if you can't afford me, there's, there's a photographer for every budget and that's absolutely fine. You can find someone who suits your budget and some people want to pay my prices and some people don't, but yeah. it's, it's being honest with people and not tricking them into emotional hard selling that is just, yeah, well, it's trickery, like you said. It's win a free photo shoot. You know, it's not going to be free, but yeah, the emotional buy at the end when your children are put in front of you in a way that you couldn't take a photo on your iPhone X. Yeah, yeah it's it is underhand. So that's a great one to shout them out on. And I think yeah. um, I don't just think it's related to family, but there's much more emotion when it's the family. Yeah. So yeah, good shout for standing up and doing it differently, right from the outset. 
yeah and um coming back to the branding then it's more just we were talking about stock photography a bit more perhaps yeah. it's just a bit of awareness about stock photography because people i don't think people realize just how often those photographs are used um you can actually do a reverse image search on google where you can i think you can right click on a photograph and it'll, you can search it google for it and it'll tell you how many times it's been shown up and if you do that exercise with some photographs on the like the front page of a stock photography website whatever you'd be astounded how many times that they've been used now you might go oh that's fine i don't care i i don't remember seeing it but actually there's science behind the fact that if you've seen something and had a negative experience with that image associated with that image perhaps you've been perhaps it's a scam website because scam websites don't want to pay for their photographs do they they use the free ones they can find online yeah. um if you've had a negative experience with that site and then you see that imagery on another website then your subconscious is going to apply that negative feeling to that website so potentially you're running the risk of just even putting people off without them even knowing it because yeah. you're using stock photography that's been used a million times before and potentially not so pleasant experiences so there's a few there's a good few reasons why stock um, photography isn't great yeah. um, and obviously I'd say that as a photographer but there, there's more to it um, and it's got a time and a place like it's free imagery that that can absolutely help you get a point across but if you want to come across as professional and personable like you say it's about having imagery that tells your story not someone else's yeah love it love it i think that's a great point that you know reversible I image search i think so many people won't like you said won't even be aware of it but mm -hmm. won't necessarily join the dots like you just have for our listeners in terms of you do a very quick search to figure out that christ that may have been used on a very very dodgy site mm -hmm. Yeah, things that you don't necessarily want to be associated with. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what about setbacks then? Talk about um, every business has them, you know, and we're probably in one of the biggest global economic setbacks that we've ever known, but other than the, the dreaded C word, what setbacks have you had so far? And I guess more importantly, Katie, how have you, how did you or how have you overcome them? Other than COVID? Oh. <laughs> I think... Um, um, I, I would say that COVID probably has been my big, biggest setback, um, but it's it has been my biggest setback in terms of I had to completely stop photography completely. And I know this has happened to a lot of businesses, so I'm not unique in this, but I feel it challenged me. So I went from that um, very secure job just November. I I think I, it was December actually that I stopped getting paid to then in April to have zero income suddenly. Yeah. Uh, that was a bit of a shock to our system as a family. Um, but what that meant was that I, I had some time to work on my business, which was brilliant. And I spent a lot of time working with you to help me um, build on my social media presence. And I worked my ass off in, on marketing and that kind of thing. So yeah. whilst it was a setback financially, actually it was a really good place to set myself up for once i was able to work again and that's absolutely set me on a great stead because that and probably the realization of families that covid made them realize how fragile precious life uh, fragile life is and how yeah. precious their family are um it all kind of coincided together in the fact that i'm really quite busy now people have people have been really um booked up to be honest because so many people are sat yeah. at home and and realizing that they can't see their family that actually when they could see their family they're like i want to capture this this is this is the time now to capture these moments so yeah. whilst it was a massive setback it put me in a really good place um to to move forwards with my business and for for people to get what i do a bit more instead of just dismissing oh i don't i don't need a professional photographer I can just do it on my phone <laughs> so it, they've kind of realized the importance of it and and I love yeah. that I, I like it when people see what I see it, it's obviously I it's obvious I'm passionate in it uh, oh my god <laughs> passionate about it yeah. but for other people to see it and and really appreciate it is nice. and, re and recognize it yeah because it, it's a picture paints a thousand words as they say and your your pictures you know make no bones about it they are very 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 good quality you capture some amazing shots thank you and, and i'm yeah i and it's that whole kind of it's a story that you're telling with an image yeah you know and those little 
uh, kind of glimpses into people's lives that they'll just go past that. You shared a video and I, and I remember that I just watched it over and over again for a couple of times. And it was one with the mother and daughter. Oh, yeah. And you, and they were almost, uh, they were like, in, you, you were interviewing them and stuff and they were talking, they, it's like they were yeah, talking. So I asked them to say, I asked them to tell each other what they meant to each other and yeah. how much they loved them and think of happy times in their childhood and all these little questions that they might have in their minds that have never physically told each other. Yeah, that was it. it was magic we're bad at telling people how much we love them or how much they mean to us. So it was forcing them, right, say this, not say, I'm not telling them what to say, but say what you feel. And they're literally in tears half the time because they're saying things that they just, they can't get over how, how much they mean to each other. And I captured that all on video as well as doing a photo shoot afterwards. So it was really cool. Uh, it, honestly, I, I, was, I was blown away because I, as you know, I lost my dad a couple of years ago and it's, there's, there's, that's the exact sort of thing I would have been all over with dad because yeah. we just run through lives busy and you, you know, we don't always, we just assume that they know, Yeah. you know, and we don't always stop to tell him and stuff. And we're all, we've always been a loving close family and stuff. And we, we, or we're always telling, we still doing that. And, but it's that, those capturing those moments and looking back when you're seeing that, that pure brilliance, there was one where the, um, the mother, Literally, she was like, oh, don't, you're setting me off. And it's that proper mother. It was just captured beautifully. Yeah. Because there was no pretense there. They literally almost forgot you were in the room. That's yeah. what came across beautifully. Yeah, I, just I the love mother it. And I was in tears watching it <laughs> myself. Yeah. And they're both mothers, right, effectively, because yeah. the one's a grandmother as well. So they, they know what it feels like to be a mother now because they are one. And it's that. So there, were depth, there was real subtle depth within those videos. And that's the beauty of what you do for me. I love it. Cool. Okay. So, um, business stuff then I wanted to, let's just say someone's listening to this and they're going, yeah, well, I'm not a photographer, but I want, I'm, I'm great at doing hair or nails, or I want to do, um, uh, I don't know. I want to get into my own IT business. I want to do what, what one piece of advice would you give someone thinking of taking the leap for the first time with their own thing? I don't, I'm not even sure where I learned this, um, but I'm very glad that I did. And I knew early on in my business that I wanted to price myself at a sustainable pricing range. Yeah. Um, and a lot of photographers start out and they charge tenner for a thousand photos <laughs> and just ridiculous prices that are great for people who, who just want a quick and easy photography photographer. But what happens to them is they end up shoot after shoot after shoot after shoot after shoot edit after edit they're, they're just absolutely overwhelmed and when you work it all out in terms of time and expenses and all that stuff they're working far less than minimum wage and that's just not sustainable as a business you cannot do photography on the cheap without really sacrificing your your life um yeah you have to work so hard to to live on those prices and I don't want to be, um, I, yeah, I don't, I, it made sense to me to have prices that I know that my uh, business can carry on running because the only way that I can help people by doing what I do is if I've got a business that's paying my bills um, and is, is allowing me to do what I do. If I, if I don't charge enough, then I can't afford to do that and I'll have to just go get a job somewhere else. So I've seen, I've seen photographers burn out, Katie, completely yeah. burn out because editing's a long, lengthy, sat at the screen, eyes kind of aging right in front of you. As you do. And that's, that's a lengthy editing process from like a single, you could do a one hour shoot and have a lengthy, right? So yeah. all day shoots, oh man. And I said- that applies seen... to every industry. Um, yeah. You can charge yourself, if you, com if you compete on prices, then the only way is down. So <laughs> the only way you can do is get cheaper. Yeah. So you need to compete on something more important than price. And that's a value that I've started, I've kept with me from the start. And I'm not gonna lie, it's made it a very slow start. Like I think a lot of photographers are up and running and with a really busy business far earlier than I ever was but yeah. now I'm in a good position and I don't have the worry of well if I put my prices up I'm going to lose all my customers I'm not worried about that I'm, I'm confident that the people who are coming to me can afford me yeah. and and I'm getting busy now um See, so that, 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 right there, that right there is gold okay so people listening to this really need to understand this point Katie because I I talk about this a lot and I always use the analogy of I want your business, but I don't need your business. Mm -hmm. 
and that's that's not a flippant arrogant thing it's it's a core belief in here because i want to work with you but do you know what i won't be living in a cardboard box in Woolworth doorway if if i don't win your business mm -hmm. that's what i mean by that so i'd really love to do your photography but i won't be missing my mortgage payment if you don't hop on board this month you know and it's you just said that so beautifully because you're not competing on price in that way you're competing on value you know your worth you know your skills you know the end product that you're giving somebody which is utterly priceless and forever mm -hmm. those moments that are captured forever how can people put a price on that i know i that is one thing that uh, i try to remind people subtly is that we'll happily we, we're all we're all terrible at it we, we spend two grand on a sofa we'll spend a grand on a phone all of these things last no more than a few years um they'll will replace in a few years time but these photographs are literally going to be with you forever <laughs> yeah. like yeah. these are tangible memories that you can have with you for the rest of your life and i guarantee that when people are dead and gone in your life that you will treasure those more than anything yeah, yeah absolutely Absolutely. Well, it's, you're kind of classic at the end of the line of that whole sales um, story where they go, you know, why do we buy a drill? We don't buy a drill to drill a hole. We, we buy a drill to hang up a memory. You know, so when I come home from work and I take my shoes off, and I'm looking at the photo of my children. That's what is my reset from my finishing work and take my and it's like, that's what I'm buying a drill for. So, you know, your product is there. You're selling drills, Katie. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so that whole yeah as a piece as a piece of advice that competing on value i think is is absolutely spot on so people listen to this thinking well how do i do that where do i start and stuff because i need to get money in and you know i, I don't want to compromise you said earlier you you know you did a few um reduced price shoots and some free shoots to get your portfolio up so you had that credibility so there is a bit of a trade-off but it's understanding that it's purposeful trade-off and then you make and you make a very clear decision on this is what I'm worth. Yeah. This is what I, and this is what you're going to get. This is the, all the value. And I think being so upfront with your prices, it just enables you to go, here's the elephant in the room and look at everything that's beautiful about it. <laughs> Rather than look at everything that's beautiful about it. Well, we're sitting there going, yeah, but how much is it though? How much is it though? And then right at the end, ah, so I am so, so pleased to see you and feel you doing it the way you are. It's great. So, um, okay. In terms of, the industry, maybe the industry as well as your business. How do you see your company and your industry, the future of it, with ever changing sort of the world now going online and stuff, and very possibly not reverting massively back away from online? How do you see the future of your industry? So, I mean, there's probably people out there who think, well, photography will be dead soon. We can do everything on our phones these days. And there's no lie that phones are getting better and better quality at taking photographs. They're absolutely brilliant some of them now. But what that doesn't change is who's in the photograph. Um, one of my important things that I constantly go on about, particularly mums, I, I'm generalising here, but it's normally the mums who are the ones taking the photographs. Uh, they make it they, they make it their mission to go around and take photographs of everyone but it's not always reciprocated from the rest of the family making sure that mum features in those photographs mm -hmm. so it's important that there's someone there to be able to take the photographs and the people that are important within your family and you can't do that for yourself unless you take a selfie but that's a little bit naff yeah. um the um there's also the element of the fact that you can take your own photographs, but you're not always happy with the way they look and we can be self-conscious and there's lots of things that a camera can do that make you look worse than you look in real life, which is not good for your self-esteem. But a good photographer will know how to take the photograph. I'm not, I'm not talking about Photoshop here. I'm talking about angles and all that lighting and all this kind of thing that will yeah. help you look the best that you can look. And yeah. so you're taking away that haphazard element of photography and giving you something that you know you're going to love moments that you're absolutely going to love and i think that's always going to be there and people who who value those moments and being able to look back on really nice quality images of all of them as a family will just always love that um, when it comes to the branding side of things 
it, again, it's getting easier to take your own photographs. And I do, I, I've even done a, a, a download on how people can take their own photographs for their business just to give them that head start while they're, while they are building up the money to do it, for example, to get photography, for example. But yeah. with everything more online, if you look at the really um popular the influencers and all this they're full of their own faces <laughs> everyone who's really popular has themselves at the forefront of their social media and personal brand photography is exactly what that is designed to prove um, designed to create and the more and more we go down the line the more people are realizing how powerful that is and especially the influencers which is a big thing at the moment yeah that's what that's what they're doing is is presenting themselves constantly yeah and very I think well. personal branding photography is uh, is the perfect way to to keep going in this online market it's a really good way to differentiate yourself from everyone else. and it's a really interesting world when you start looking into the influencer world and stuff and their homes are like mini studios and they've got it's their their, their kind of diaries are geared around showcasing their everyday life and stuff and it's they're, they're they're literally it's like the truman show for some of them it's a very intrusive kind of but it's a business right it's but they've a, got crap photos you're just you're not going to be interested because you don't want to look at that do you? No, exactly and it, you just mentioned and you and you know you gloss past it because it's one of those taboos i think of the industry so it goes back to the myth thing but this whole photoshop stuff because of the, the images we see on like the front of i'm going to say i won't even say a branded magazine but you know the ones i'm talking about where yeah. they you know they they give a very false impression of physiques figures you know the ideal woman the ideal man and all that sort of stuff but carl zeiss lens are on mobile phones now for god's sake if you look at the technology on lenses and and how they bring light in if you don't know what you're doing you're going to take a crap photo even with a good camera yeah so you if you don't have the skills to be able to edit them well that's the other beautiful part that i think you guys are just unsung heroes in because yes you know how to set up the, and the planning and the kind of strategy days that you do in terms of what do you actually want as outputs now let's look at lighting location and all the different things all that stuff gets worked out but then to know how to capture that shot and then knowing how to affect the lighting to just completely change the mood of it and stuff. I'm in awe when I watch you guys work because it's fascinating to see it. Because yeah. you see some, that's what I see. It's like you see something that we don't. Yeah. And that's the craft that I'm willing to pay for. And that's what people should be paying for is that ability to be able to see what we can't see. Because when, then, when you show it us back, wow. Yeah. Try and put a price on that. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay, cool. Um, so the future of your industry, uh, I, I, I think you're actually, I don't think it's anywhere near dead. I think it's only becoming more and more popular. Influence is a great, a great point. Pinterest is building as the third biggest search engine now. Uh, you know, there's, there's so much that's image led and video led that even not just our business, but our personal lives are so consumed by them now. And um, so I was going to ask you about kind of maybe what, what you're listening to or reading at the moment, but I know you're very busy at the minute. So what, what are you working on? I'd rather ask you that question. What are you working on right now? I'm working on right now. Um, I've been recently gearing up towards my Christmas sessions. Oh, well, not even October yet. And uh, yeah, I'm gearing up for Christmas, but I'm trying to be prepared because the more prepared you are, the better you're doing <laughs> with these yeah. sorts of things. Um, so I have got the real thing. Father Christmas is coming to my studio in November and I'm very excited that he's going to be popping by and helping with his naughty and nice list. So I've got this really lush experience, especially in these COVID times where the supermarket sounds or whatever is probably off the cards in terms of everything that's going on. So I think I've got quite a nice personal experience that's all COVID secure and all this kind of thing. Fingers crossed. We're not locked down anyway. Um, And it's just gonna be a really nice experience where parents can bring their kids to meet Santa, talk to Santa, they get 10 minutes with him. It's not this rushed thing, 10 minutes, and I'll just be there to capture the cute little smiles and perhaps the scared faces and just the nice little moments that, that um, you, you remember from your childhood. Don't, everyone remembers meeting Santa. <laughs> yeah, of course they do. And, yeah, and, and the parents remember their kids' faces and, the, and, and telling all the family about it. That's the beautiful part. It's like, look at the, this is where we went to see, oh, you know? There's bragging rights in that as well. Come on, let's become a parent. <laughs> so I'm really excited. This is going to be a this is going to be an annual thing now. I'm I'm really excited about it. Wow. I've got I've got a deal with Santa himself. So 
that. Oh, I like that. See, dealing with higher people. So, um, is that is that taking place in your studio then? Yeah, on November the seventh, I've got it. Um, we've not got much in the way of spaces left. It's very limited, and um, yeah, it's it's going to be a really good day. Fab. Fab. Well, I, what we'll do, because um, we'll, we'll get all your contact details and stuff. And and would it be a, would it be cheeky that download? Is that something you'd like to share? Because we can put that in a link for people to be able to download it and contact you and stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because what we'll do is we'll put your contact details in there, the best to get hold of you. We'll come into that in a minute. And when we share this, we'll put all those links in, right? Mm -hmm. But if we can, while well, we've got time now, let's put the links in for the event as well. Because there are some people out there that are parents that haven't got it sorted yet and are probably panicking yeah. about it. So let's make sure they can, right? Absolutely. Yeah, get all your Chris Christmas gifts ready in time for Christmas. Long. Yeah. So I've got to ask you. I, I've got to ask you a COVID-related question now. Um, yeah. What are you looking forward to the most coming out of this nonsense? <sighs> what am I looking forward to the most? I don't know. Just being able to just look forward to things. I think there's just that anxiety over everything. Like I, I would love nothing more than to just book somewhere away as a family, but. Yeah. I just I don't I don't feel secure in doing that yet and that, and I think we could probably do with that as a family with everything that has gone on, on over recent months and I would love to um just celebrate our time together but yeah. I don't want to book anywhere because <laughs> I, <Yeah. laughs> I don't want to throw my money away no doubt all of their terms and conditions say that you know the situation so it's yeah. your risk now <laughs> yeah exactly yeah they put all the responsibility onto us end of so yeah their insurances and everything else yeah so well um yeah events i'm looking forward to events and getting together and hugging hugging i miss oh gosh yeah i really do you know, really human interaction that kind of yeah, I hug my clients when they go i don't i don't hug everyone not everyone's a hugger and i never used to be a hugger but i'm definitely more of a hugger now <laughs> cool, cool. Well, I, I you know i think it's a big part as, as humans need it um yeah and that that whole event stuff is and the social aspect I'm missing and like you said yeah they're getting away in the holiday and you know we talk about different awards and stuff for what we do at sales academy and we always talk about courage and stuff um you are courageous katie beyond belief and i've seen that and i felt that in the time that i've had the pleasure of working with you on the journey that you've been on and are continuing to go on so um before we kind of sign off i just wanted to say to you i am extremely in awe and impressed with your resilience and your ability to find the kind of faith in humanity to do what you do. And I don't say that lightly. You're a fucking inspiration and I'm allowed to swear. It's my podcast. <laughs> All right. But it's been lovely getting to find out a little bit more about you and so that you can share a little bit behind, you know, moments by Katie Mitchell photography, because there's so much more than that. You've, you are that, that mum, you are that family person. You are that person with a, with a, a career that made impacts and changed lives and stuff. So you has, as, as I said, right at the start, you've lived a life and you're helping people capture those moments so they don't miss them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. Is there anything else you'd like to leave our listeners with before we go? Because I'd like to just capture the contact details. Um, no, I just, I just love helping people with the really important things. Don't, don't ever look back and regret doing something. Don't regret, not having those photographs even if you take the photographs yourself just don't don't go oh i don't like having my photos taken just take them because they're not for you they're for your children yeah they will they will thank you for it even if yeah. you don't like it at the time that's probably a good important message that's a brilliant message they will treasure them forever that's the thing to leave it with so anyone we're going to put your contact details in the in the links when we send it out but of those different ways to contact you anyone listening or watching this what's the fastest or the best way for them to get hold of you katie I would say if they go on my website and use my contact page, that's probably the best way. Cool. All right, fab. Well, listen, thank you. And Katie, in terms of, I, I really appreciate you being honest. It's been fun. We've had a bit of a giggle. Uh, and I hope for you it's been painless. <laughs> my, my mission is with these podcasts is to get a little bit under the skin, as we said at the start, and behind the scenes. Uh, to, because I think companies in the main, for a lot of us, can seem, the people behind them can seem unreachable. And in my experience, that's far from the truth. So I believe wholeheartedly there, there are brilliant stories that lay within each of us. Uh, and we have no idea how and why our stories can impact if we were to tell them. So thank you once again. Thank you for our listeners, our viewers, subscribers and contributors. So please follow for, and subscribe for more episodes. But Katie, thank you ever so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.